Okay, so real talk requires real face and real hair and real pillow talk. I don't know why people are drinking tea and claiming that they're spilling tea even though they're not really spilling tea. Because real tea spilling is when you throw it in someone else's face and call them, you know, what they really are. And I think only one YouTuber on the other tube um, really had gone that far. Um, except for the calling out their name. And I think that, you know, because it's such a widespread problem and because everyone kind of dabble into this, you know, problem that we're having on AuthorTube. That, you know, it's really hard to call out people who are the bad players and then trying to say, oh, I'm not that. Because everyone has done it. Except, you know, me and like some other people who haven't, you know, really conform with the standard that's on YouTube. And if you are new to this channel, hi. Um, this is the first video of Pillow Talk. I'm trying something new. And I'm gonna see how it goes. Most of this is not going to be edited out or anything like that. Um, I tried to make a normal video of this yesterday, but I kept having take after take after take because I was ranting and rambling and I was not making like a precise point in my videos. But this one, this one will have a precise point. So, what is the problem going on on YouTube um, if you're like super new? Uh, the problem is transparency. Um, mostly, um, it's people giving out advice they don't follow. Um, other parts um, is just bad players um, doing nasty things to normal average people who are their peers, who are their potential readers, um, or anyone who actually read any of their books, and then say, hey, you know, I don't care for X, Y, Z, can you change it? And this is going beyond author tube. This is something that's been a huge issue on Tumblr. Um, I know it because I've been there. Um, I was on Tumblr. And even though um, it is, I want to say, very liberating, um, talking about whatever view you want to have, for the most part, um, it's also a very, you know, self-righteous place, and um, it can easily change into a very vicious mob mentality. And if you just don't click, you know, you don't have any followers, you don't have anyone, you know, that's rooting for you or anything like that. So, the problem, um, really, is identifying what are, what's really causing these bad players to do bad things. And... Why do some of the good people accidentally do the things that are problematic in other tube? You know, why would they give out bad advice um, if they don't follow that advice themselves? Why would they promote um, their products even though it's the same things that you would find for free? Or, you know, react in a very negative way? Um, and etc, etc, etc. 
So, I think the best way to root out a problem is to identify the source of the problem. And there's two biggie sources I found. Uh, one of them is ego, and the other is fear. So we're going to talk about ego first. Um, ego is kind of like a self-defense mechanism where all this time um, it's kind of like an overblown version of self-respect. To have self-respect you're supposed to be able to love yourself and love others and love who you are entirely. Uh, love the skin you're in, love your cellulose that's hanging around, <laughs> um, loving your wrinkles, loving all of this um, as you who you are, uh, where you come from, in your background, in your heritage, um, uh, what you s identified yourself as. Um, I could go on with whatever labels I have. Um, they're a bit morons, um, at least in this today's culture. But essentially self-respect um, stems from self-confidence and loving yourself. And respecting others comes in a form of treating them as how you treat yourselves. So why do we have people with overblown egos? Um, because they don't really feel comfortable in their own skin. Uh, there's something about themselves they're not quite comfortable with, and they want to protect themselves. Um, it's a shield. It's a piece of armor. They don't want to be attacked for who they are, um, and their lack of qualities um, that they see in themselves. So they rather just attack others um, first. That's one of the things um, egotistical people do. They attack first so that way they won't get attacked. Um, um, another thing an egotistical person does is ignore the bad parts of themselves and try to make them look better. It's kind of like an animal um, or bullfrogs swelling in size to show that they're the dominant one. Um, and it's a form of self-defense. You know, I'm the biggest, baddest person that you ever meet and you don't want to deal with me because I will hurt you. Um, and they do that so that way they won't get hurt. And if they do end up getting hurt, now they have a sense of um, permission to go and do the things that they have worn about, um, which we will consider bad behavior. So, how does this result in author tube um, doing bad things? Well, having a bad ego. Um, for starters, uh, you won't be able to take your work objectively. Whole part of the writing craft whole part of art craft is not only loving the work that you've done, but knowing that your work needs work and that you could always improve it somehow. And um, once you get it to where you want it to be, you know, then it becomes your own style. Um, but if you're still learning as a student, per se, um, you know, there is always room for improvement. Um, no different than violin playing, um, I play violin. Um, no different in music, no different in painting, no different in sculpture, no different than in film or in books. Um, storytelling is an art. It can always be improved if you're learning these storytelling skills. So if anyone takes criticism. I mean, it is true criticism. Uh, we'll get into that later. Where, you know, they're pointing out things that are not working for them. 
and um, giving advice on how it should be worked on and approved. Um, you know, people who has such a huge ego is going to react so negatively where they would do anything in their power to hurt the critic. And that's wrong. Um, you need critics throughout your writing process and that way when the national eye or the global eye looks at your work they'll be able to finish reading your work and um, enjoy it. Now most of the author tube is in commercial fiction we're genre writers most of us. Um, I'm a genre writer too, so our main goal is commercialize entertainment um, in books. So, so if we need to have some sort of critical eye if we want the general audience to like our work. I mean, I understand the first draft is your draft. Um, I even said it in my Panzer Method video that you are the audience. Um, this is really meant for you. You put your story down. You determine how it goes. But once you start the second draft, once you start editing, you take it and translate it for other people to read and enjoy. You make the story more dramatic. And the people who are approaching you, um, offering you advice um, during this process, are there to try to help you because they see you as a friend or a colleague or a client. And they're there um, for, you know, because they care. They care about you as a person and they want you to succeed. Or um, it's their job to care. So, egotistical authors um, can't handle their work being criticized and they lash out. So, how do we identify this? Uh, people who lash out during the better reading process really, not just, you know, oh, you know, how dare you, you know, Oh, I probably should rephrase it, like, real, real, real talk, uh, like, over-the-top reaction. I mean, not everyone's going to handle criticism at first. Uh, we take some time to, like, stew on it, and then eventually we go, oh, that right, or other people have been saying the same thing. We do analysis from better re feedback. So, someone who is egotistical who would do anything in their power to shut them down um, will attack them, will isolate them or remove them from the beta reading process, and then start this is the kicker start on disseminating advice based on the rejection or the criticism that they receive trying to make themselves feel better because they are hurt by the words they said. They do take it personally because it is their work. Um, they can't separate from the work. Um, so if anyone um, says anything bad or give really good criticism or critical feedback they just go over the top. So that's one way of identifying an egotistical author or a writer. Um, another sign of someone who is egotistical is um, manipulation control of their followers. Um, now, everyone in the Twitterverse and Tumblrverse, and maybe not so much in the YouTubeverse, 
have minions um, and they utilize these minions um, to you know advocate for them when something goes wrong um, the positive thing that I've seen is when the system has a um, this is a huge issue in YouTube um, where there is a um, censorship bot where you did something that's considered like a Sony rights or utilizing movies or clips or whatever that seems to go against um, privacy terms and um, and you are actually in the right um, to utilize those. Um, I think the best example is um, editing is everything. Um, she accidentally got slammed where all of her videos are demonetized and this is actually her job. YouTube is her job. And um, now she's worried about how she's going to make rent and pay her bills. So she asked her people to, as she was spilling the tea, uh, that is proper spilling tea. Um, author tea bears take note. That's proper tea spilling. Um, so she asked her minions to go out and advocate for her and um, things got, you know, turned around for the better. And that's a problem that YouTube is dealing with where you have an AI bot um, thinking that oh, something is wrong and then you have just one human that thinks oh maybe it is wrong and you don't have like um, backup checks or multiple people looking at this and something that they could easily fix by having just uh, one or two more people to kind of do more screenings and reviews and um, you know, do double, triple, quadruple checks instead of just demonetize and then wait for a review. Um, you know, I think they should have done something different because uh, some of these people who are innocent and they they get slammed by this bot um, and get demonetized. You know, it really affects their life and really um, puts a strain in the trust relationship between the creator and the um, platform. But I digress. Um, that's the good way of using your minions to advocate for you. The wrong way, which most people do, is using your minions to go into this mob frenzy and like, um, you know, go after the innocent person who is just giving really good book review of your book. Um, give a really good critical feedback of what you've done. Or even worse, I'll um, tell your followers not to follow them. Um, simply because they just rub you the wrong way. Um, and, and I think that's what happened with me on Tumblr. Um, I just wrote the person the wrong way and they just, what they did in the writing really irked me and um, I realized, oh, I can't be your better reader, I'm sorry. Um, and they got really, really mad and I think that's why I was so shut out on Tumblr. And everyone who's in their circle just don't really understand how bad this person is. Uh, so, yes, I have a story, and now I'm not really going to tell it because it's very convoluted. Um, I kind of touch it on a little bit in one of my videos called Villains and Gender Identity and the Doppelganger Queen. Um, but that being said, um, Uh, let's see, so that's the second thing we could find out about, like, identifying the egotistical author or writer. Another one, uh, this kind of goes into the traditional published ones, the, uh, the ones that who have been established. 
um, is that they already are finishing the work, but they don't treat people who are part of the process uh, well. They really smash them. And this is an old problem, as old as time, um, where, you know, co-workers or people who come together on a project don't really care for each other. Um, but this one is really uncalled for. Um, I think it was Brandon Sanderson got really upset about the cover art on one of his books. And that's an old problem that traditional authors always have, you know, the cover art is not exactly what they imagined. But it is a marketable art that people use to pick up their books. You know, um, taste is fleeting. It really depends on the taste of that moment. Um, so it's a snapshot of, you know, what the market thinks that's going to be marketable. And you pick the artist that makes art that, you know, everyone wants to go and buy. And, you know, is fairly accurate to what's going on in the book. And, um, I think the most inaccurate cover art uh, for a book uh, was our Salvatore Stritz Jordan, the very old ones where he looked um, a little bit aged and he's got this headband going on. Um, it's very, very 80s. Oh my god. Um, it was bad. <laughs> and I can understand why, you know, authors nitpick over covers and that's the loss of control through traditional publishing. The thing is, is that if one collaborates and tries to put together the best book that you have and that may be the best choice that they have to select from because maybe all the other art um, that was given for that book probably sucked and that's probably the only one that looks good. I mean, you had to go from the, the best that you have at your selection. And I think, um, and I really do think that companies really do try their best um, to present the best product um, they have out there because, you know, it's part of their money too. It's part of their investment. So, anywho, um, so yes, um, so back to Brandon Sanderson. Um, he was so upset that he launched his minions at him. Um, really threw a ten um, temper tantrum. And, um, of course, everything's all fine afterwards. They, he apologized for his temper. And the poor innocent artist that, you know, is happy that he gets a commission for one of his books. Okay. Um, and the whole thing's really uncalled for. Because the art was beautiful. It really was a beautiful work of art. And he was just being a diva. And I think that's something we have to be aware of, that we can eventually dissolve into divas. And we have to understand where other people are coming from. And try not to be that righteous over something so small, otherwise we look very petty. Um, of course, self-publishing really doesn't have that type of problem. I mean, you literally could slap together something for your cover. You could really slap together some kind of format. Um, you could skip the editing process and just, you know, pop it up there in Kindle. Um, that is a big no-no. <laughs> Um, if you want quality work out there on um, Kindle or ebooks and you're starting out as self publishing, you've got to go through proper people who know proper stuff. And yeah, that costs money. Sorry. Um, traditional publishing? Yeah, the company is spending money on your book. Um, it is an investment they do, and you get the cut. Because you're the original story creator. Um, 
but they have to break even with your work. In self-publishing, you have to break even. Um, some people do, and they're able to um, sell a ton of books, and they're excellent marketers. But not everyone's like that, and it's really difficult. Okay, so we kind of see who the egotistical authors are. We kind of see some red flags, and I think you have a fairly good idea of what the other red flags could be. It's just someone reacting and taking things personally. They, they really shouldn't have to take things personally. And um, they have a strong following because they're top dogs and everyone loves the top dog. So how do we solve this? Um, if you are, if you fit any of these things, um, I think Now's the time to start looking inward and realize what am I doing that um, is hurting other people or what can I do to stop that? Because it is causing anxiety. I'm sure of it. Um, this feeling inside that you're feeling inadequate and you have to keep you know, puffing up your chest and trying to show that you're a lot better than others. I'm sure that's causing some sort of distress inside of you. And the best way to go is to try to be nice to other people and get used to the vulnerability of being human. And honestly, the right people, the good people, really don't mind. Really. Um, there's nothing wrong in being human. There's nothing wrong in showcasing your faults and your feelings and that you are learning and growing in your writing craft and um, there's a little tiny poster next to my um, Star Wars Rebel poster that I had discovered that um, most of society, um, of Western society, um, view mistakes as bad and in the samurai um, way, the Bushido way, it is dangerous that someone was able to do anything without mistakes. It means that they haven't learned anything and they're dangerous. Uh, meaning that, you know, they could, not dangerous as in they're lethal, um, dangerous as in they could hurt themselves and accidentally hurt others and um, they were danger to society. So, if you make mistakes, you're learning, you're growing, you're becoming a master, and that's okay. You're um, going to have to start somewhere, um, and if this is your first story, your fifth story that you're finally working on, that's okay. Um, I told stories out of the wazoo to my siblings when I was a itty bitty bitty kid. So I have a really good gist of what storytelling is about in its basic form. But I'm learning the writing aspects of storytelling and how that is translated into a novel format. So, um, I'm learning. I'm growing, and that I don't really showcase my feelings and the mistakes I have done, except for my better readers and um, the few agents I've queried. Um, I do make them, and um, they're going to be there, and that's okay, because someone, like my better readers, like my agents, uh, or agent. Uh, like my editor, like the people who will make book reviews are going to find them and, uh, or ARC reviews, sorry, not book reviews, are going to find them and they're going to point it out to me and I will have enough time to fix them and make it a better story. Because that's all I really want, that people to read and be entertained. And I think that's what you want too. 
um, your story crap is going to suffer if you don't realize where the mistakes are and how you're going to fix them. And these people who are pointing it out to you do this because they care. Um, if they're a bit angry and a bit frustrated when they give you advice, that's because you somehow disappointed them and they're frustrated with whatever process you have in place. And talk. Just talk to them. There's nothing wrong in talking. I don't know why people who have such a huge ego are afraid of talking. I mean, then again, it's a sense of vulnerability. It's a, another opportunity for people to attack you, but honestly, this should be an opportunity of understanding. Maybe, maybe they are just so frustrated with how you set up your questions that they didn't have a chance to really tell you what is really wrong with your book. And they just got really agitated and maybe that's why the way they phrase things came up the way they were. And maybe there's some things that are inappropriate that you wrote and that you had to fix it so that way it's like not inappropriate <laughs> and wrong um, to other people who may not be you. Um, can really identify with your character. So, you know, do you take a chance to talk to them? Um, I had twice gone through in my beta reading process where there was something I did not like in the better reader's response. Um, one was that they rewrote a paragraph, um, this happened twice um, on their part, um, they rewrote a paragraph claiming it's theirs and they said they proved our story. That's crossing the line and I got really upset and um, so I took a moment to wait until I calmed down and tried to talk to them, which is hard. Because I was still upset, but not so upset where I was emotional. And they didn't take it all too well, you know, and they blew up. But eventually they came around and we actually talked like adults. Uh, and the reason why they came back is because they love the story and they love what I'm doing. And they admit they crossed the line and um, they were sorry. Um, but how you handle that situation is, you know, don't be a little person when they blow up at you. And if you're getting heated, <laughs> um, say, you know what, we're going to take another time or another day to talk about this further. And that's that. And if they decide to walk away, in the better reading process, let them walk away, but understand that they realize, oh, I made a mistake, it's my fault, and I should never walk away, I'm sorry. You know, give them a second chance. Um, that is in the Christian teachings, um, I don't know if it's in other religious teachings, but I'm sure there is, um, but you give them a second chance, and and I did in this case, and, you know, I never had this issue again. Um, I had a second issue where, you know, it was a mix between a better reader and a critique partner, and it was about prose. And that... <laughs> um, we have different writing styles. So there was a misunderstanding, and I got really irritated that, you know, what they're asking for is actually a change of style. So we, I got to a point where I almost had a fit, but instead of lashing out at them, I told them, I need time to think about this. And eventually, like three days later, we finally had a talk 
maybe it's a week later, and they didn't know what they're doing was offensive to me, and there were other things I probably did um, that, you know, that probably helped muddle the issue. So we both apologized to each other and clear some air, and that's it. You know, we didn't lose our friendship, and um, she is still willing to be my better reader and critique partner. So, <laughs> if you are in the situation where you're dealing with criticism by the general audience, that's what better reading is about, is um, having a general audience member read it long before ARC reviews, then uh, you have to just let your emotions play out, let your... <laughs> the phone... Let your logical mind kick in, and you talk to the other person. You don't shut them out. You don't unfollow them. You don't block them. You don't kick them out of the reading pool because they just irk you. You just don't do that. That's petty. That's uh, stifling. True critical feedback, and true opportunity to improve your work. The whole point of better reading is not to cater your ego. Same thing with critique partners. They're not here to advocate for your ego. They're here to advocate your story. And if your story is not dramatic and entertaining, um, they're going to have to let you know. And that's the whole fucking point. <laughs> um, and ARC reviews, they're kind of the better reading version, except you already went through the editing process with the publishers. They're going to point out things that you may want to fix. That's the last public testing that you can experience before you put it out there. And it may help you break you. So, yeah, just understanding that you're going to make mistakes, and if people point out your mistakes, they're not here to attack you. Um, but if it's already published, and, you know, you have uh, people doing uh, reviews, the reviews are not for the author, the reviews are for the general audience. Um, which, should I pick up this book? Only if you like Joss Whedon and Firefly, yes. <laughs> if you don't, walk away. <laughs> and I like Joss Whedon and Firefly. Um, so, that's what those reviews are. In any second time I see an author saying, oh, reviews are for authors. No. No. No, you twat. No. Um, no, it's not. It's not. Um, that's another part of your ego kicking in. Another part of you controlling minions. Um, another way to make yourself look bloated and say you're a top dog. No, don't. Um, don't do it. <laughs> and um, it's just showcasing how petty you are. Just don't. Um, reviews are for people who want to buy your product and want to see if they should purchase it or not. That's all the review is. Um, it's not your space, it's their space. It's for them. Um, If there are mistakes they are pointing out that, oh, I could have fixed, that somehow slipped through, um, and for some reason it's not really um, suiting their own reading style, you have to, two options. Um, you could either take it or you leave it. You're not going to grab everyone um, 
because everyone has a certain taste in what books they read. So that's a whole part of the review process. Um, and the issue with Goodreads is kind of like a minion mentality that if they want to um, kiss ass to the author, well, the young author, um, they will give it outrageous reviews. And like a normal professional author that they haven't really gone through the whole Goodreads gauntlet, uh, they give it like really trashy reviews and I think that needs to stop. Stopping sheep. And that kind of leads me to the second thing is uh, fear. So <sighs> fear is that um, it is afraid of fitting in, mostly, that I've been seeing on the other two, and Goodreads and Tumblr. Uh, fear that um, you're not cool, and the only way to be cool is with the cool person. Um, fear is not be willing to stand out and be by yourself. Um, and embrace your own different. And um, it also plays into this whole xenophobic fear. And this contributes to the whole self publishing versus traditional publishing. Really, we should not be fighting because the only ones who are winning are um, the readers and Amazon. They're the winners. Uh, we're the arms dealers. We provide the ammunition um, for their imagination. That's what we are. We should not be fighting it against each other. We should be collaborating and doing mergers, okay? Uh, we should not be, uh, you know, fighting against each other. Because it's ridiculous. Because all traditional books and all self-published books all funnel into Amazon and, you know, Barnes and & Noble and other um, platforms. Um, and we all eventually, when we get good enough, get printed and um, eventually have hardbound covers and get into libraries and be loved, eventually. So there is really no need to like fight each other. Um, the fear of losing, the fear of not winning the thing, uh, marketing is competition is bullshit. Um, when it comes, at least the marketing is competition where it really just poisons your peers and your networking with others. I think it's ridiculous. We're all storytellers trying to get our stories out there. That's the whole point of it all. And for us to attack each other like this, it's stupid. That's the xenophobia we need to stop. I literally lost a follower in the middle of my vlog when I, you know, happened to mention I'm going to traditional. And I bet here in this video too and I probably would lose a follower as they go off in the rage going no, no, no <laughs> and I think it's silly I really do like I have no financial strength to put together a good quality or at least my standard of a good quality book out there and I'm going through traditional because there are people who respect and uh, me as a person and um, so far I have like three encouraging rejections from um, agents um, 
who like what I'm doing, but I don't quite get there. Um, I'm not quite what they're looking for. Uh, one agent was polite enough to give a critical feedback, which is really nice. So, this whole silly, you know, traditional versus self-publishing needs to stop. Um, oh, marketing is competition and April 1 is your enemy needs to stop. Because the other way to market is collaboration. Especially on YouTube. YouTube, um, especially the viewers, love collaborations between author tubes. It's like having the best of your TV shows come together into one. It's like um, Star Trek and Doctor Who. You know, that major worlds collide together. I mean, that's what the fans like. You know, can you imagine Kim James uh, working with... Um, oh, I forgot her name. Kristen Martin. Imagine a Kim Chance and Kristen Martin collaboration. That would be huge. Huge. And that would be amazing. So, that type of mentality needs to stop. It's just xenophobia. And if you want to create a community, you need to stop attacking your members of your community. Um, another part of fear is uh, what I have mentioned earlier is about the fear of standing out. Um, for the most part in high school, um, I don't really fall into cliques, except maybe the orchestra clique. And even then, it didn't really work out. Um, I've always been an outsider, I've always been a lone wolf. When I go on MMOs, I am the lone wolf, you know, I go off and do my own thing. And that's because usually I have the self-confidence to do so. Um, that's all it is. Uh, I really don't care about conforming. I just don't. Um, I do like being with other people and having friends, um, but I don't feel like I have to sacrifice who I am and my opinions and my brain for someone else's sake. I just can't. No. So, if you're in this situation where you are a minion to someone else and you realize, oh, I'm following a bad person who does bad things, like the egotistical one, you have the option to leave. You have the option to like unfollow or walk away. Um, you also have an option to try to talk to them. Um, depending how close you are to the author, you have the option to like let them know that you don't care for some of the stuff. And you are allowed to create forums and discussion groups and, um, you know, pr pretty much create your own fan group and to discuss some things um, and be able to speak out your own mind. Um, you are allowed to have an opinion. Everyone else is allowed to disagree. And everyone is allowed to have civil, civil disagreement and discourse. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that. I think um, that's an art we have lost. Because um, eventually, you know, the person just wants to win, so they do anything just to win, and they get personal. And that's stupid. You don't do that. Um, you say, oh, I'll just think about it, and then you mull over it. Okay. Um, but no, you're allowed to have your own thoughts, and if you realize, oh, this is bad advice, you're allowed to put down in the comments, hey, this is bad advice. I disagree with what you're saying. 
because here are my reasons. You're allowed to do that and they don't have to like it. And it's not the end of the world that they don't like it. Really. It's not. Life goes on. Um, what's really bad is the isolation that comes. Um, and this is where we need to stand up against the bad players. Um, is that they use their minions to like unfollow you or to hurt you if you decide to go, no, this is wrong. And, um, you know, that's what we need to do. We need to like step in and like advocate for the people who have a different opinion. Um, and their opinion is probably right because you're going to learn what works for you, what not works for you as you continue this writing craft and most of our content, um, at least the advice content, it's really all about the first draft or the second draft. Um, they were like the early stages of writing. After that, you know, you kind of grew out of it. Like, I know what's what. You know, sorry. For the most part. Um, and that's the problem with YouTubers. Um, we're kind of hitting a... Oh, author tubers. Um, they're kind of hitting a plateau right now. Uh, followers, you know, we already hit that. It's like 40,000, something like that. Uh, probably not even more. Or it's probably like 400. It's for something. Uh, and that's a very low threshold compared to the other YouTubers like Jenna Marbles that have like millions. Uh, million, millions of followers and like thousand likes. We you know we as yes, the other two community is not going to get there. It's not everyone who's a reader go on YouTube. Um, this is for the 30 olds and down uh, for the most part. Uh, we do YouTube. So We can't just sick people after our peers, because this is what the community is. Um, it's people who are trying to create stories and trying to get published with their stories. And people who already are published uh, are trying to help. <laughs> uh, and you just can't. Oh, and um, people who are, are fans. We have fans. Um, that's it. Most of our members are writers or peers. And um, the other followers are just fans. And you just can't sick someone after a fan, no less a fellow peer and that's wrong if you are doing that stop that's wrong you don't do that because eventually you will be isolated for the majority of readers that are out there um, the youtuber readers like the book tubers um, the uh, YouTube readers, um, there are a small percentage of the bigger readers out there, and I'm talking about readers who are older than my generation, the millennial generation, readers from the 40 plus up. They don't get into this, and they're going to hear advice from the younger folk whether or not this is a good book to read, because um, they pretty much read all there is and they are looking something new new and if they're not getting any good feedback because you know this author just attacked you because you just have one tiny point that didn't 
mesh well with their mindset, then yeah, they're not going to pick up their book and uh, they're going to walk away. So you really need to treat people with respect. And uh, if you are someone who is afraid of getting attacked, you know, it's words on the internet and um, it shouldn't have to be a problem where you have to stand up and give your opinion that, hey, that's wrong advice, that didn't work for me, I disagree, I think it should be this, and you shouldn't have to be attacked for it. And if any of us, I think we, author YouTubers, that if we see this type of behavior, we need to pull that YouTuber aside, give them a talk, give them an intervention, let them know that, hey, I too disagree with what you're saying, this is wrong. Because part of the community is also policing. We have to start policing our own thing. Uh, we're becoming big enough where we have to start, you know, putting down the bad guys and we have to keep our community a flourishing writing, reading, um, book community. And um, we are a very young community by social media standards, by far. We're like five years old, not even ten years old. So, uh, for like social media, you know, YouTubers and, or like social media book reviewers and uh, readers and writers, I mean, we're very young compared to the centuries and decades of others that came before us and the publishing industry that came from it, you know, you know, we're very, very, very young and who knows what the future holds for YouTube or Tumblr or other social media platforms, there may be something new that everyone will flock to. And what we're doing here, we'll probably will end up destroying ourselves if we don't do something about it. So we need to create a safe place for people where they don't have to be afraid to give out critical feedback and uh, be able to disagree in a civil manner. And that's it. You know, and I think that's a problem throughout the whole internet where you have trolls. It's obvious who the trolls are, you just ignore them. Um, but, you know, if there's something worthy of discussion and um, if it's something you disagree, it's okay to talk it out. It totally is. Um, this is coming for someone who was raised on the forums back in the 90s where discussion is um, you know, a form of entertainment in a way. And I can't believe I'm kind of missing it. Um, but that's what we really need to do. So, not only we have to create a safe place for those who are afraid to speak out, um, but also, oh shoot, what I was thinking of. But also, you know, not be afraid of, you know, oh yeah, here it is. Uh, 
Yeah, real talk. <laughs> uh, not be afraid of not catering to kissing ass. Uh, afraid of not receiving the rewards from such a relationship. True, good, healthy relationship doesn't require you to kiss ass in order to get the benefits of the friendship. This kind of really goes in hand in hand, you know, um, this is the whole dynamic between the ego author and the afraid author, you know, and they kind of just mesh up and hook up and stupid. That was my battery dying, and I probably talked like two hours worth here. This is going to be a really long video um, of real talk. But uh, getting to my previous point, I think that you shouldn't have to kiss up to the person just to get them go to nugget. Cause you already are yourself a good a nugget. Um, you have something different to bring to the table and you should not be afraid to bring that. Um, this is an already saturated um, viewer market and you know just trying to do the same thing that everyone else has seen, yeah, they're gonna walk away. Um, same thing with the old story, you know, do something different that we haven't seen before, you know. Um, that's where you have to read a lot comes in. You see the same thing over and over. But you want something new and different. Um, and I think you know, you shouldn't have to kiss up to, you know, get some sort of benefit from anyone, anywhere. Um, you shouldn't have to be that way. You shouldn't have to do that. Collaboration should be like a mutual benefit for both parties. should be done out of friendship, um, it, it, at least in a business friendship kind of way. And that's not really kissing you up, that's just um, a really smart business move. Um, you're letting your fans bleat, you know, geek out, you know, over this mega, you know, uh, collaboration. And I think we need to continue doing that. But the kiss up I'm talking about is like giving awesome review stars for a book that probably don't deserve awesome review stars just so that way you can be in their good graces when you do better readings with them that's kind of the result of bad actors behaving badly and controlling manipulating others you know these people are afraid to let go a toxic relationship because it is toxic you should be able to give a good critical feedback without being lashed out and anyone who should lash out at you, you should leave them. You should walk away from them. And you shouldn't have to suffer the consequences of walking away from them. You shouldn't have to be isolated and that's what we need to work on in this author tube and the tumblr tube or writing t tumblr etc that's what we need to work on is creating a safe place for people to give good critical feedback and um, to be respected as a person because these people just care they care about good stories and um, no one should be attacked for making a really good, fair, unbiased report. You know? So, yeah, I know it's a really long video of real pillow talk. Uh, 
I'm not the type to really spill tea because I just drink coffee. Um, but if you are really going to spill tea, maybe you should call out some of the bad actors and tell them, hey, you know, uh, stop it. And if you have done the bad things in the past, maybe you should look through your videos, identify which video contains all the bad things um, that you have done that is just rotten advice, rotten, you know, content that really is more destructive than good. And if there's nothing good in that video, you know, go ahead and delete it, remove it, you know. I don't care if it's like money or monetization. And I think everyone should make a pledge, you know, um, for their video that um, I am going to be honest and trustworthy and um, I'm going to try to be a better author, a better writer, and a better person. And I'm not going to hurt you. Um, and all I want to do is make really good stories and give out good advice. So I think that's what everyone should do. And I think everyone should try to police, you know, the bad actors out and try to create a safe space for people who want to give good critical feedback and want to be attacked by the mob. So, I like this revolution. I like the tea that we're swimming in. But eventually we have to do something with this movement. And, and I hope this video is helpful. Um, this pillow talk, this real talk. Um, if you like this, give this a like. Um, let me know what your thoughts are down in the comments. Um, this is a safe place. You're allowed to speak your mind. Um, you're not allowed to be vicious or mean or cruel. You're allowed to have a civil discussion. And we could talk about it. Um, if you want to share it out among your peers, then go ahead. I have other videos on my channel, I'll go ahead and click subscribe. Um, that way you could go back to my channel and look at my other videos. Uh, click the bell for any more videos. Um, I try to do these things on Thursdays. And sometimes I have a sick day. So um, in case I have a missed day, uh, that bell will help you notify when that late video is going to come up so you can watch it. And we will be back to our normal standard programming on the Panzer Method uh, where I'm going to talk about uh, raising the stakes next week. And I'll talk to you later. Bye!